Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 19th of September. A uh, few updates this week. Again, some nice functionality, but not a huge number. As always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment, and share is appreciated, which really gets me into my first thing, which is a huge thank you. So I did hit 70,000 subscribers, and yes, I did kind of get these little cookies. They're Oreo cookies. It's Azure Blue. Mm, cookie. So to celebrate, I'm gonna do an Ask Me Anything session, um, 8 a.m. Central Time on the 22nd. So we just come along and just have a little bit of fun, ask questions really about anything. And uh, computers, career, motivation, all of those things I would try and address. So please join me, but huge thank you to everyone that has supported this channel. New videos this week. So part five of the DevOps Masterclass, really dealing into secrets. Why we have secrets, how we can avoid having secrets, manage identities, Azure Key Vault using from pipelines, really bringing all of that together. And then diving into the App Service Environment V3 what it is, why it's different, how do we pay for it. So new features. So on the compute side, Azure Functions has a new extension, a version four for Cosmos DB. So remember Cosmos DB is this huge geo scale, no SQL, i.e. there's no fixed schema solution, supports many different types of API. So these extensions make it easier to integrate with, in this case, Cosmos DB from an Azure function. Now this version four adds support for things like Azure AD based authentication to Cosmos DB, so I don't have to use primary keys anymore. It has a change feed processor. So as changes happen to the Cosmos DB, there's a change feed. So I can easily see, well, what is actually being modified. Well, there's a great way to hook into that now from a function. It's got higher performance, a native JSON um, document deserializer, so it just understands the components of the JSON document. For the Azure Kubernetes service, AKS, the run command ability has gone GA. So remember the run command is all about, with AKS, there's that management component that's really just done for me. Now I can have a private AKS cluster. With a private AKS cluster, the API scheduler, which is the part I normally talk to, rather than being just publicly accessible, it's only accessible via a private endpoint, i.e. an IP address within a virtual network I specify. And I have to be in that virtual network or connected to it via VNet peering or like express route or site site VPN to be able to interact with the Kubernetes layer that's powering that AKS. What's really nice about this run command is if I don't have that network connectivity, with this command, what I can actually now do is like an AZ AKS command invoke, um, kubectl git nodes. And via the AKS API, it will go and talk to it. So now I don't have to have that VNet connectivity and I can still interact. There's role-based access control to actually control who can use that run command. I need AZ CLI 2.24.0 to use it. But now I get a little bit more flexibility in actually interacting if I need to. There's a new scale down mode in preview for AKS. So one of the huge things in Azure is it's consumption based. So we horizontally scale. Hey, we have more load coming in, we add instances. Hey, the load is dropping, we remove instances. We do the same thing for the worker nodes in our AKS cluster. Ordinarily when it scales in, it deletes the instances. So it deletes the compute, it deletes the storage. So when it scales up again, it has to recreate them. That takes a certain amount of time. It has to go and recache certain images it might be using, which might slow down initial um, creation of containers of pods on the host. So now what you can actually do is you can set the mode of scale down to either delete, which is the norm, or actually deallocate. So with deallocate, just like a VM deallocation, it deletes the compute resource from a node, but it keeps it as an Azure object. The disks, like the managed disk of the OS, 
is kept and the other disks are kept. So now when it needs to scale up again, it will start the existing worker node, that existing VM. So it's gonna start a lot quicker. It's gonna have whatever was cached already there. So it's gonna be able to create those pods and everything faster as well. Now obviously it's gonna cost more money because the storage doesn't get deleted. So I'm still paying for the storage, but I stopped paying for the compute aspect. So now with this feature, I can pick what I want that scale down mode to actually be. Now obviously that scale down mode of deprovision would not apply if I'm using ephemeral disks. Ephemeral disks, remember, rather than using a managed disk, it uses local disks in the host. Well, if I'm deallocating, it's removed from the host, so that there would be no storage left locally on the host, and it doesn't support spot VMs either. And then I talked about this before, custom policy definitions. So we have this whole idea of AKS policies. It's built on Gatekeeper. Well, I have these constraint templates which really define my requirements. I can define my own custom policy definitions through these custom constraint templates. So I can add my own essential policy to AKS. I get enhanced error state information. I can see if there's conflicts. So it's just an overall better experience. On the database side, so PostgreSQL hyperscale um, GA features are, well, 11.13, 12.8, and 13.4 minor version support of Postgres, i.e. what hyperscale is built on top of. And then what makes it hyperscale is it uses this Postgres Citus extension. It gives me things like those distributed tables where I can shard the data over multiple instances. And it gives me certain tables can be replicated between nodes for lookups, etc. Well, now it supports Citus 10.1. That was really a performance increase, a bug fix release, but it supports now that Citus 10.1 Postgres SQL extension to give me that distributed set of capabilities. Azure SQL Managed Instance now has native Terraform support in that provider. So now I don't have to hook out into an ARM template to actually create my managed instance and delete all those things. Now I just have native Terraform support using the Azure RM SQL Managed Instance command. Miscellaneous, um, nothing to do with Azure unless I'm authenticating with a Microsoft account. But it's now passwordless. I can turn on this passwordless option. I can actually go to my Microsoft account and I can opt to say, hey, I wanna be passwordless. And now there's no password. It removes one of those kind of security vulnerabilities. I do have to check what maybe devices I'm using, what apps that might still need the password. But essentially I can now move to maybe just my authenticator app to kind of approve my authentications. So you can go and check that out. The link, as always, is in the description. The Azure Monitor Agent and the data collection rules that tell the Azure Monitor Agent what data to collect and where to send it. Remember, this is the replacement for the old Log Analytics Agent, the Telegraph extension for Linux, and the Diagnostics extension. All of those rolled into this new Azure Monitor Agent. Well, it now supports Windows Server 2022, the new version of Windows Server. The Azure VMware solution Jetstream DR is in preview. This is all a disaster recovery solution, a replication, either for VMware replicating to the Azure VMware solution or an Azure VMware solution replicating to another Azure VMware solution. So that is now supported. Azure VMware solution is also now FedRAMP High certified. That's one of those US Gov certifications. And the Azure Virtual Desktop the Azure AD join has gone GA. So that's kind of going to be huge for a lot of people. Before, it had to join an active directory. So I had to have line of sight to domain controllers. It would join those. Now, when I actually hop over, if I was actually going to go and, for example, create a new host group. So here I go to Azure Virtual Desktop. I say, hey, I want to create a host group. And under the virtual machines, if you scroll down now, you're actually gonna see, hey, domain to join, we have a choice of Azure Virtual, De Virtual <laughs> Azure Directory or Azure Active Directory, tongue tied to that cookie. Uh, you can now pick. Now realize there are some considerations you kind of have to be aware of 
if you do the Azure AD join, not all of the features are there. Now you'll notice there was the option to kind of do an Intune involvement as well as part of the Azure AD join. But some things like FS Logics Profiles, MSIX App Attach on Azure Files, they still need Kerberos authentication. They still need line of sight to regular Active Directory to make that work. Uh, there's no Windows Store. It's local user profiles only. And the documentation really goes through all of those various details. But depending on my requirements, that ability to remove the Active Directory need could be huge. And now I can just do that native Azure AD join for my Azure Virtual Desktop environment. And last but not least, um, Ignite has been announced uh, November 2nd to the 4th. It's a virtual event, it's free. Go and sign up, again, link in the description below. And there'll be a, a ton of great technical sessions there. And that is it for this week. As always, thanks for watching. I'm gonna uh, finish my little cookie here. But hopefully I'll see you at the AMA. And if not, I'll see you at the next video. Uh, take care.